Package themselves. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. We're rolling ever towards the 300th episode of this show that we have done thanks to canceling wow. another show that we did that was very similar <laughs> but bat themed. We cheated! That's how they get to issue 1000 so fast for a lot of other books. And for this show, folded in that show, now almost 300 episodes. I thought we'd do some major books that I promised we'd get to probably before 300. We're never gonna make it. But I thought we'd do at least one major book before the big three ho ho. And so we're talking about Secret Empire. Now, what's funny about this is that both of you have had experience with Secret Empire because we have another show where we review books as they come out. And this is a relatively recent event. And so, as such, you two have some recollection of the details within this book. I do, yes. At least somewhat. But you don't have the whole piece, and so we're just going to kind of get into what Secret Empire was and what it ended up being. Of course, this was the major event that came out of the all-new, all-different Marvel era that took place after Secret Wars. So right. Hickman, like, wrecks everything, brings everything together. It has an unprecedented period in comics where every tie-in for the central event was good, if not excellent. Mm -hmm. And then Hickman's like, here you go. Do what you will. Reboot, start over, do whatever. Yeah, whatever. Marvel's like, care. all Just right, all new, all different. And so... Marvel basically said, like, we're going to start this new initiative, where we're going to try, we're basically going to do the DCU of Marvel, which is, we're going to turn a couple of characters on their ear, we're going to change some things up, and do some new stuff. And that was at the worst possible time for Marvel Comics to try that. So we're going to talk about Secret Empire. It was this massive Nick Spencer written event that spun out of the new, all new, all different Steve Rogers Captain America comic book series that was going on at the same time, written of course by Nick Spencer. Spencer was doing that thing and it's actually become kind of a trend in comics now to Hickman it up, where it used to be, do this story. And then like, oh, occasionally you do like callbacks or references to previous things. Hickman's like, I'm laying the groundwork. If you read the first issue and you read the last issue, you're gonna be like, oh my God. And it's, there's, gonna be, there's gonna be a thousand issues between. But it's all gonna tie together. Exactly. That seems to be the new norm because of how much praise and critical acclaim Hickman got for having done that with Fantastic Four, Marvel, Secret Wars, all that stuff. So Spencer was kind of doing that too, setting it up and doing this big new status quo for Captain America. Obviously, by the way, the status quo was not going to be that way forever, but it was going to be this big, oh my God, payoff such that I have no doubt that there's a moment from this book that is echoed in Endgame, and I'm sure it's a wink to this moment. Mm -hmm. And you two know what I'm talking about, yes. because these two used to do a full show called Off the Rack, where we would talk about books week to week. Now Tiffany and I do a live version of that show, but uh, well, that book was happening at the same time we were doing that show, yep. so you, you have some recollections, some references, some echoes, if you will, of Secret Empire. Ben, what do you, what do you remember from Secret Empire? Uh, God, I only remember two things from this book. Good, what are they? <laughs> One is that Captain America's shield is pointy instead of round. Okay. And that someone throws up a lunchbox. Excellent. Yes, neither of those matter, but absolutely happen in this book. How, what? How does your brain work? I don't understand. Strong visual cues. You know, that's funny. I was, yes. I was reading this recently, and when that happened, I went, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot that happened. Secret Empire as an event. And having reread it recently, I gotta say, like, if it's divorced from all of the controversy that surrounded it, it kind of reads well. Like, I, I really kind of understood and dug it, and there was absolutely no expectation in the back of my mind, partly because it came and went and it's been done, and it's been undone, but, like, for me... There's no way that anyone could possibly have expected the fallout from this to be negative for any major character. Hmm. So the, the, the conceit is, of course, that Steve Rogers was in Hydra the whole time. Yeah. Now, if you said that, 
you know, I'd be like, whoa, you just completely upended Captain America and you ruined the character forever. But like in the context of this story, that's not really what happened at all. No. So in a previous story arc, which you may remember called Civil War, Captain America died mm -hmm. because another Captain America villain called Dr. Faustus mind whammied his then girlfriend Sharon Carter into shooting him with a time gun. We're not gonna get into why, but he died. And so as such, Bucky, who was the deep brainwashed Winter Soldier, took up the mantle, became Captain America. We had a little fun with Bucky being Cap, but after that became blase and nobody really cared about that status quo. We then had Cap come back and then he got old and so he retired again, but this time he left the shield to Sam Wilson who became the new Captain America, all new, all different Captain America, if you will. Right. And so Sam is Cap at this point, and Steve is like kind of in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. or whatever. Right. Is he still old? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so Steve's old and doing his own thing. In fact, uh, after the fallout from Avengers versus X-Men, Steve feels bad for like having really screwed over the X-Men. And it's kind of like Marvel being like, hey, we're really sorry that we marginalized the X-Men and replaced them with the Inhumans, which we absolutely did. And as an apology, they made a book called Uncanny Avengers, which was Cap's in-universe excuse for like making an apology by forming the Avengers Unity Squad, where he's like, well, I'm forming an Avengers team, it's gonna be primarily mutants, to kind of like showcase that the mutants are cool and that they're fun and that, you, you know, there's a book for you if you right. like mutants because the guy in charge doesn't want to do books with X's in the title. So he has a unity squad. That's, okay. and, and, there's, and in that, there's a whole arc where Red Skull unearths Professor Xavier's body. Yes! Opens his skull up. Oh my God. Takes out his brain and then puts his brain on top of his own brain and then somehow gets psychic powers. Yeah, he, yeah. he uses the old brain hat method. Exactly. The old Daniel Boone, if you will. Yeah, it is just do that. It's a, a brain-skinned cat. I just love the fact that it's not, like, it's dead. Yeah. And also it hasn't decayed? No. It was very fat. He did well, it really, really quickly. It's also because, like, you know, he's a mutant. Yeah. Like, it doesn't decay like, a, like we That's do. That's not how it works. He's got formaldehyde for blood. Yeah. It's okay. So it's always preserved. Yeah. So, anyway, for, for Red Skull gets psychic powers. <laughs> That's like all you need to know about that. Does it look like when when they draw? Does he look like classic? You know, Professor X, where he's like, and then it's like, kind of, you know, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. No, they take that opportunity to the extreme. They take it to such an yeah, extreme. Right. There's a horrible event called Axis in which Sixes. Yeah, Sixes. You remember where they where they couldn't oh. draw? They wanted to be able flipped over. Uh, Red Skull becomes Red Onslaught because you know Professor X's brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on! Yeah, it's rough. But, like, the will of Charles Xavier doesn't, like, power him oh, no, to it, be good? Oh, it, no, it, it forms another consciousness that, that reaches out to Rogue to be like, kill me, Rogue, I don't want to be a Nazi. It's like, you're not. You're just a brain. Let's not get into I know. that. Oh, man. Okay, so there's this other event called Pleasant Hill. And Pleasant Hill... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a weekly event that was also generated by Spencer in which... Uh, Maria Hill, formerly of S.H.I.E.L.D., basically mind whammies all the villains and turns them into docile suburbanite dwellers and then like sticks them in a prison that's basically just like Americana circa 1955. Mm -hmm. And uh, Which is fantastic. Yeah, a great idea, also problematic and a human rights violation, but in any case, the villains, of course, get their minds back we're not going to do Pleasant Hill, but the fallout of Pleasant Hill is that Maria Hill is ousted, Steve gets elevated, and uh, the whole thing, by the way, is facilitated by a uh, Cosmic Cube. Uh, you see, Cosmic Cubes, if you're not familiar, are these... Uh, it, they called it the Tesseract in the movie, and it's a, 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 an infinity gem inside of it. That's not what Cosmic Cubes are. Cosmic Cubes are these cubic devices that can be built... And they are essentially wish-granting machines. It's like a genie, but without like all that bullshit. Right, except part of one became a genie <laughs> because it gained sentience and became a little girl named Kobik. Yep. Right. And uh, of course, this is the same Cosmic Cube that was in Red Skull's possession. 
So when Kobik gained sentience, they used Kobik, that is to say Maria Hill and Dr. Eric Selvig, and uh, her their facility at Pleasant Hill, and they strong-armed Kobik into helping them make these villains into good people. Yeah. Of course, that didn't last, and Kobik thought that she belonged to her original owner, the Red Skull. Right. So she goes to Red Skull and she's like, Daddy, Red Skull, of course, tries to have her assassinated immediately. Oh, a little girl, that frightens and upsets me. Shoot it, kill it, get it out of here. So, <laughs> oh, you're horrifying. After that- I'm just a little girl. Yeah. That's what I mean. After that- You didn't... have a normal face. Yeah. It's not red. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't look like a skull. Incidentally, Red Skull does have a daughter and she does have a Red Skull yeah, face. Yeah, she does. Uh, Kobik engenders herself to them by <laughs> fixing her face. That's sin. Skull Does Red Skull out. then disown his daughter? No, he's not. No, he. She doesn't want that face. Hey, so this is the face you were born into. That is this not is true. If she gets that face later. No, Red Skull's like, you. Oh my God, you look beautiful now. She's like, what about all those times you said? Yeah, no, I was full of shit. Honey, look at me. Am I beautiful? <laughs> In my eyes. Honey. While she's doing work for Pleasant Hill, she's funneling information to Red Skull, right. and Red Skull is helping to like kind of sow the seeds of dissent within that. Right, and giving her candy. Oh, naturally, yeah. And only the finest German sweeties. Well, I was assuming it was cosmic candy. <laughs> she could probably generate cosmic candy. Yeah. So uh, Kobik winds up doing that, and during the Pleasant Hill situation, uh, old Steve Rogers, Captain America, gets involved, and uh, he is almost beaten to death by one of the Red Skull's right-hand men, Crossbones, who's a big bad supervillain. Uh, <laughs> Crossbones has beaten Steve to death, and right before he dies, he has this vision, which is beautifully portrayed. Uh, I think it's by Phil Noto. Uh, but oh. that image is of Cap's life, and it's just everything he was and is and has ever done. And he's like, this is fine. <laughs> like, I did good. I did enough. I'm fine. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. Plus, like, I know Thor. Valhalla probably exists. I'll be all right. So, I'm, good. I'm worthy in their eyes. Right, exactly. So he's about to die when Kobik visits him. And she's like, I can give it all to you. Like, I can put everything back to the way it was. And he's like, all right. Like, once more onto the breach. So he accepts. And this is when Crossbones gets Cap's shield in his own hands. And he's going to chop off Steve's head with it. And Steve catches it. And his like strength pushes it back. Crossbones like this is impossible. And the Avengers show up and they're like, "Hey, Steve, you're back!" And he's young and he's pretty again. He's like, "All right, I'm back," but also changed. And in Steve Rogers' Captain America, they reveal that like, yes, he's back and he's seemingly cool. But then there's this moment, and it's when uh, Steve is teamed up with a couple of Captain America sidekicks that everyone forgot about. He boards a plane with Eric Selvig in it to beat the bad guys and Flag jumps on board when he wasn't supposed to and Steve's like, oh man, like you weren't supposed to be here, dude. Push. <laughs> Kills him and then says to Selvig, like, Hail Hydra. And that's the big Hail Hydra moment. Oh my God. Which of course is echoed, I think, in the end game elevator scene when he's back in time when he says yeah. like, Hail Hydra. Yeah. It's like, oh man, like, yes, it's an excellent moment narratively within the context of that film, yeah. but also I think it's like a wink to like this seminal moment in Captain America's history. Even though most people don't like it, listen, like... Look, Captain it, America's saying, Hail Hydra, come on. It's a mind fuck. So you're like, whoa! I mean, get in on the newspapers and everything. So it was a big deal for Marvel. And they were like, we're going full steam with this. And so thus began a the, like, what is happening? And so they revealed that when Kobik brought Steve back, at the urging of Red Skull, she rewrote history with her Cosmic Cube abilities. And so basically... You know, when Steve was a little boy, his mother was roped into Hydra, and so Steve was raised on the, like, ideals of Hydra. And it's still Steve. Is this almost like the Hitler youth? Yeah, kind of, but more like, more evil scientist based. Okay. You know, Hydra's, Hydra is, a, make no bones about it. Hydra is a Nazi organization, mm -hmm. but it's also like an ancillary, it's like Nazis, yeah, but also Hydra, because Hydra's also older than Nazis, but the, the but Red Skull is like the face of Hydra, so yeah. hey, come on. But no, if you really want to like divorce them, which they really tried to do, because when Secret Empire happened, Marvel tried to get all these comic book stores involved in this like Hydra takeover, and so they were like, put up these Hydra flags, and, put all these and most comic shops were like, nah, 
Because even if Hydra technically isn't a Nazi organization, you know who doesn't know that? Most people. Yeah. So it's going to look cool like we're it. Nazis. So I'm not going to do that. You've got a skull as a part of your logo. <laughs> I know, like they did. It's it, not good. That being said, like, superficially speaking, on paper, that's kind of a fun idea. Like the mm. idea that, oh no, we've all been working for Hydra. Ha ha. Like, that's fun. But also, eh, Hydra though. Do we really need to give, like, stupid people the ability, ammunition. ammunition to be like, see? See, comic books are evil. Yeah, they're bad for you. Maybe they would just think that they were all pirates. See? Yeah, just big Jolly Rogers. <laughs> Plus, they got the Kraken theme. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, we're just good seafaring adventurers. We're exactly. Lovecraftian pirates. There you go. I mean, Hydra's, it's in the name. Yeah. yeah. The name Love is in it. It has to be wholesome. Yeah. I think that's how that works. <laughs> I don't think that's how anything works. In the new continuity that is written for him, a secret member of Hydra. But he was like raised on the ideals of Hydra. But he's still Steve. So he's still like a good man who believes in this like moral foundation. He's like an idealist. So he's like, I believe in the dream when he murders Red Skull. Which is the best moment. Because, like, he meets with Red Skull, and Red Skull's like, hey, you are, like, you're, you're screwing up the plan. And, Red, and Steve's like, you, you pervert the true ideals of Hydra. And Steve, Red Skull's like, are you shitting me? No, you don't even believe this shit without me. And Steve just throws him out a window, and he dies. <laughs> Which is, I think, amazing. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Because, yeah, Red Skull's like, no, you don't even believe in Hydra. It's all fake. Ah, yeah. oh, crap. You were defeated by your own plan, Red Skull. Yeah, hoisted by your own petard. That's right. <laughs> You red skulled Nazi douchebag. So now Steve is seemingly alone, but also he's the supreme leader of yeah. Hydra, having ousted Red Skull. And he's got plans for this secret empire. And so now that you got like the brilliant strategies of Steve Rogers mixed with like the true innate evil of Hydra, you have this. Unstoppable machine. Exactly. And so with Se the secret empire is launched by Steve kind of like sowing the seeds of dissent within everything and also launching these like plans and then plans. So here's the deal. Steve steals some Chitauri eggs that are technically queens and hides them on Earth. Also facilitates this whole like planetary shield that's gonna like protect the Earth mm -hmm. but actually is going to keep all the spacefaring characters out of the Earth so they can't stop him with their like Captain Marvel powers or right. their Quasar powers. Oh, I thought it was because they were dirty aliens. Well, they're I not mean, purebloods. Certainly, the Secret Empire believes that they're dirty aliens, and they treat Inhumans like second-class citizens. It was Muggles and, and <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the Chitauri start coming. So all these spacefaring for, for their Easter egg hunt. Yeah. Well, no, for their queen. And they're just like ah. Much like critters, right? I never saw critters. <laughs> you missed an hour. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> critters too, critter ball. Okay, that's the only cool part about Critters. <laughs> the only cool part. I agree. Meanwhile, Steve launches an attack on New York using a bunch of colorful supervillains. So the Defenders, which is of course to say, not really the Defenders, but more like the Netflix Defenders, Venice's Defenders, which is to say the New Avengers, but they're not called the New Avengers anymore. Yeah. You know, like Luke Cage and everybody you like. And so they go in to fight them and they're just holding their own, getting their ass kicked when, you know, all of a sudden, Steve teleports all the super villains out of the situation. And then Baron Zemo, who it's been retconned in the new continuity, in the new Koba continuity, yeah. is like Steve Rogers' Bucky Barnes. Like, Baron Zemo is Steve Rogers' best friend in the whole wide world. Is he wearing like a little mask? I mean, he's, he, yeah, it's Baron yeah, Zemo. He still has. Mask. Yeah, it's like, you know, yeah, he has his Bucky mask. mask. He's got the Bucky mask. Yeah. <laughs> what the, the hell are you? I'm Bucky Zemo. <laughs> Or Baron Bucky. Yeah. So Baron Barnes? Baron Barnes. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I like that. So Baron Zemo has control over the Darkhold and plunges Manhattan Island yeah, no, into the dark dimension. There was dimension. a moment when you were talking about keeping the heroes away yeah. where immediately my brain unlocked the tie-in. No. Don't worry about the tie-ins. We're not going to get into them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I still was transported back there and that time surrounding this book, and uh, okay. Yeah. By the way, Steve being a secret Hydra agent makes Civil War II a lot better. Because all that shit you is... You just blame it well, on him being like a freaking, you know, Hydra agent. Steve was manipulating people and events within Civil War II so that Civil War II happened. It's not... 
a character assassination against Carol Danvers and Tony Stark again, it's actually the machinations of the Machiavellian genius that is evil Steve Rogers. Steve-il. Steve-il, if you will. Yes. <laughs> Still, Civil War II sucks, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, they take Iron Man off the table after Civil War II. Uh, Hulk gets killed. Hulk dies. Yeah. Yeah. Hulk's dead. So, no Hulk. Unworthy Thor. He is involved with Steve because Steve seemingly lifts Mjolnir. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. So, Steve holds aloft Mjolnir in this battle against the heroes, and Unworthy Thor is like, well, it's part of a greater scheme. Well, especially considering he's so down on himself because he can't lift Mjolnir, he's like, oh, anyone can? Oh, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> That's true. So well, Anything, yeah. anything just to be worthy again. That, that being said, like, it bothers me that he just rolls over for Steve because Steve is so clearly evil, but he needs to form, like, a, an evil Avengers. A dark Avengers, if you will, but not that dark Avengers. So the champions make it out, thank goodness. And uh, they help with like the resistance force. Right. But like, so- Aren't the champions like kids or teenagers? Yes, they're, they're kids. Okay. Well, and they're used because they have to be like the counterculture to, you know, yeah. the old guard. Everyone trusted Steve and they put all their like resources into him. They put all their queen eggs into that basket. Exactly. But, but the Gen Xers are like, no, everything sucks. <laughs> it's funny though, no. Sucks. They're actually the most <laughs> idealistic teenagers I've ever seen in my life. But they, they need to work in that regard. That's also the totally wrong generation. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, Gen Xers like are the mutants and all the people who just like get teleported away. Yeah. By the way, oh, the new the mutants. By the like, what what about the mutants? Yeah, like Red Skull had a whole problem with mutants, but now all of a sudden the Inhumans are the second class citizens. Yeah, because you know there's there's more Inhumans than there are mutants, and also we're trying not to make mutants important. So <laughs> so it's, it's we it's, want our movies back. Yeah. So actually, and why don't we why don't we make the, the mutants look like assholes? So the Secret Empire is like the United States, and Steve and his like rule and effort essentially make the U.S. into, like, a, a, a Hydra state. Yeah. And so they immediately start, like, with their re-education programs. Like, kids are going to school. The kid who wants a Captain America lunchbox and his brother is an inhuman who barfs up things that you need in that exact moment. Yeah! Yeah, he goes to school and he's being indoctrinated. Like, that, that for me was the most egregious part where they're like, oh, yeah, and everyone just rolls in line. Like, right. everyone's involved. I'm like, that's, no. Th is that fast? Yeah. Well, I mean, school I mean, teachers especially. Right. The, they yeah. get paid Cause, shit. Because teachers, yeah, well, that's fair. <laughs> Look, Whatever. What's what the I curriculum? I teach, yeah. I just need to make sure that I'm good until the end of the month. I am a, I am a teacher, and I find that offensive. They're but that like, being said, like, I know a lot of teachers, and uh, I can't argue maybe, with you. Maybe Hydra Cap is like, increase all faculty or all teacher pay by 30%. Right. And give them this curriculum. Yeah. Woo! Done! <laughs> We're all Nazis now. <laughs> Uh, the other thing about Civil War II that I forgot to mention was, of course, Ulysses made everybody see this vision yep. of Miles Morales killing Steve Rogers mm -hmm. on the Capitol steps. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of Civil War II, Miles Morales is like, screw this. Like, I'm, and he goes to the Capitol. He's like, I am no one's puppet. I am not Destiny's servant. Like, let's do this. And Steve goes, and then they retcon and explain that, like, Steve is going. And his people are like, you're going to die. <laughs> like, you can't go. And he's like, I'm not going to die. Because I was taught by Hydra to look at all angles. And so what everyone else was seeing, me being killed by Black Spider-Man, what I was seeing was behind him. And what he saw was Hydra flags that he had won. Oh. And so he's like, I don't care right. if I die so long as the greater purpose lives on. The greater good. The greater, the greater good. good. <laughs> So Steve sees that he's going to win at the end of Secret Empire, so he's like, okay. So then he goes to meet Miles Morales, and he doesn't die, and so you're like, oh, Ulysses is full of shit. Well, actually, and then, yeah, no, he is still full of shit, because nobody likes Ulysses, and he's stupid. So, yeah. anyway, that, that was a big, like, oh my god, like, that makes Civil War II a little better also. Anyway, so now, like, everyone's being indoctrinated by, like, the new regime, and Steve, of course, is believing the bullshit Hydra thing that Red Skull made him believe in the first place with his retconned past. So they're teaching children in school about the great illusion, which is that the Axis was winning World War II, and they were going to win, but the Allies stole a cosmic cube and rewrote history so that the world that Steve Rogers is railing against is the real world. But 
if I win and get my Cosmic Cube put together, then I will be able to put the world back where it was, which is, of course, actually wrong in the first place. But, like, because of how this book was being sold, and how they were like, no, that's Steve Rogers. And it's like, yeah, it is, because that's physically him, but his past has changed. But the heroes are fighting against this evil Steve, they don't remember it that way. Reality wasn't changed that way. It's all a fiction conjured by Red Skull. So it's not real. So once yeah. we beat Steve, we can just make it all go away. But for some reason, people couldn't see the forest for the trees during that time. And so they're like, no! So, you know, and I guess because it's a but really- that's Steve! Yeah, but that's Steve. And it's like, yeah, it is. But like, once we get the Cosmic Cube and fix it, it won't be Steve. It won't be him anymore. Well, it'll be Steve, but like that Steve will have been washed away. Right. This is what it's like to be a watcher. Yeah, it's just frustrating. It's, you just you're just like I don't know. I I mean I know that happened. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, I know that happened, but it like didn't happen anymore. Yeah, but I saw it happen one time. Right. And it doesn't matter if you change it. It happened. So the heroes all set up shop essentially in Las Vegas. Uh, and they're trying to save people and get information. And of course, Rick Jones is involved because Rick Jones, who was a Bucky and also a Captain Marvel, yeah. like he's a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, Rick Jones is captured by Hydra and he essentially steals the most valuable information about Steve and he funnels it to the heroes. And Steve then is gonna have Rick executed. His council, which is made up of like Madame Hydra and Faustus and Zola and everybody else, uh, they're all like, Steve, we gotta go harder. It's Steve. Like, it's Steve in there, but his past is retconned. So it's Steve, like, who is a good man who believes in the cause and he, like, he defends Hydra as fervently as he defends America. So he's like, you know. They're talking about how like we got we we we've Rick Jones here. He's like, well, Rick is my old friend, and they're like, well, we gotta we gotta execute him. He's like, so he goes to Rick, who's in his prison cell, and he's like, Rick, you you have to basically renounce America and pledge yourself to Hydra. I can't defend you if you don't say the words. Like, yeah. just pay lip just service, say it. right? And Rick's like, no, I'm not gonna do that because I know that you're gonna snap out of it. And I don't know if like Rick is being played as. He's gone insane from Cap's betrayal, yeah. or if he's just so delusional he thinks that like, I, listen, I ended the Kree Skrull War. I coincidentally am responsible for the Hulk. My life is a series of coincidences. This is no different. Right. Rick Jones is just the audience being like, look, yeah. I know at some point you're gonna be Captain America again, so just be Captain America. Again. Right? Like, how about you just do it for me, for old Rick? Come on. It doesn't work out, he gets executed by Firing yep. Squad, saying Avengers Assemble, which is like tragic and horrible, and I, I, I thought it was a really, really gut-wrenching sequence. Uh, but it's also a way to hammer home, like, Steve's a douchebag. Yeah. But he's so sad. I love it when he's like, before he's executed, you know, he's he, Steve leaves his cell, and he's like, so long, Steve, I'll see you later. Like, gray skies are gonna clear up, and Steve's just like crying. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my, my friend's gonna die. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad. Also, Steve has Sharon Carter mm -hmm. uh, as like a prisoner, but like she's a well-kept slave. Yeah. And she's just like, I'm gonna kill you one day. You betrayed everything, I'm gonna kill I'm, you. I'm gonna get a time bullet. Yep. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> I bet you will. But at some point, we're gonna bang. No, cause I'm young and you're old now. So that'd be gross. <laughs> So, that's Steve saying that? I mean, that's me being Steve saying that, but like Steve would never say that because he's a better man than I. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the Avengers are like, we're screwed. They get the information to the Avengers. The Avengers Wait, are like... AI Tony? Yeah. yeah it's well, because Tony, when he was beaten in Civil War II, he almost died. So they put him into like a medically induced coma and they put him into like this like creepy metal thing and they like stuck him underground until he healed or whatever. Like they basically put him into a Kryptonian healing coma. I was going to say. And so. Uh, but then a whole bunch of other Iron Men show up and like they all. They should have had four Iron Men and like they're, who, which one's the real Tony Stark? Yeah. They did have kind of like that because there's Cyborg Superman and there's also like Doctor Doom Iron Man. Right? I'm just saying, like, there's just, like, one all, like, AI one, one, like, just dude. Yeah, you know. then, and the Doctor Doom Iron Man one. Yeah, and, infamous then, like, Iron Man. and, like, one from outer space. Yeah, that would have been pretty wizard. Right? It's basically so we can have Tony Stark in the books, but still allow that horrible event to have influenced all the books. Sure. So for a while, in your back issues, Tony's blue. But is that's, it, like, all you need to know. Is it just Jarvis? Just no. Like, I'm just pretending to be a... In Tony. the comics, Jarvis is a man. 
Yeah. He's not a friggin' AI. He's just a guy. I thought Jarvis was a man in the Ultimate Universe. No. No, he's like, oh. he's always a man. He's, he's always, always a, a guy in there's the comics. He's always a man. Okay. Named Jarvis, who works for Tony. No, he's like a force ghost. Yeah. Kind of. Oh, better. Tony is? Yeah. yeah. He's like, it, it's a, it is an AI that's running him, but it, like, it's based off a bunch of like brain scans and personality. Yes. Like whatever, so that like he could be quippy and fun and whatever. And he, he can get be. drunk. So like, he's yeah. sad that Cap betrayed everyone. So he like rewires his own system so that he can perform poorer and be drunk. And it's like this is the part of it that was really the most dumb. frustrating for me because I was like, why? Right. Yeah, I know why, but like yeah. you just did this. It's... Also, the covers really drove me crazy. They're in this oh, event. because they're such lies. Yes. I mean, the the cover for Secret Empire suggests that Spider Man is front and center. Yeah. Spider Man literally is in one panel of yep. Secret Empire. That is to say, Peter Parker, Spider Man. Miles Morales plays a keyer role. By the way, uh, the, the New York plot is, it's in the dark dimension. Yeah. Dagger of Cloak and Dagger is like on top of the Chrysler building or whatever. And she's just like shining lights constantly from herself. And then she's, she's the only light that they have in, there. Yeah. And Kingpin isn't like, is. He's part of like the resistance. Like he's funneling food and water and supplies. Yeah, because to, he's a greater scheme because like his plan is to become mayor. So like he's playing the good guy for right now. But like, how am I going to be mayor of a city where it's when it's in the dark dimension? Well, yeah. no, but that's his whole plan. He's like, when I come out on the other side of this, everyone's going to remember that I was a good guy. That yes. I was the person who was helping to keep everybody alive. They are are like um, keeping to some degree the fact that Strange doesn't really have magic. He's just gotten off of. Um, the the uh, death of magic. Yeah, the death of magic, essentially. And um, Dennis Hopeless is writing it, and therefore Spider Woman is in it heavily, and it's just a quip fest, and Bear Mordo is the villain, and yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, they, they wind out. up getting out of yeah. the dark dimension. They use and enough like gadgets and other like random like magic crap, and they get out. And Wilson Fisk does become mayor. So the Avengers in Las Vegas are doing their thing. Because the information theft from Rick Jones, Steve has to give a proportionate response to the heroes in Las Vegas. So they launch these like Hydra Martian craft to annihilate Las Vegas. The big cheat and frustration about that moment is that like, I remember way back in the day at Marvel, but new Marvel, they made this like prognostication of things to come and they showed all these like images of ideas they had yeah. in the future. And one of them were these cool like Martian craft from like like War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. Yeah. And they realized like every time that they got like to that point, they were never gonna do that. And so they finally just retconned it that they were Hydrocraft. Yeah. There. And so the Hydrocraft annihilate Las Vegas, you know, untold dead, you know, all this crap. Uh, the, yeah, that, the, that the heroes are gonna do what they're gonna do. The information that the heroes get is of course that Steve is retconned by Kobik. Yeah. And so there are pieces of this cosmic cube all over the place. Tony says he's got this like cosmic cube shard detector that he's going to use to go find all the pieces. It's convenient. He's lying. <laughs> there is no detector, and he's just hey. taking them on a wild goose chase. Yeah. Uh, At least there's that. Yeah. Black Widow's like, no, we need to assassinate Steve. Screw Steve. He would want to die if he knew what he'd become. And the champion's like, we'll come too, and maybe we will like keep you from killing him. I yeah. Like, I like that, especially where Steve would be like, no, don't. <laughs> Don't, I love Hydra. Hydra's great. Well, not only that, but like, no, I love life. Like, I literally, I was a good guy, and I was going to get killed by crossbones, and like, I got barely an opportunity to come back to life, and I grasped at it. So clearly I fear death desperately. You know, she's like, no, 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 not just the death part. She's like, she, he wouldn't want to be Hydra. I know he thinks he does now. Right. But like the Steve I know, he, he would not. He would want to die. Yeah. So... The, yeah, you're not killing the Steve you know. You're killing the Steve you didn't know. So That's me. So, so Black Widow and the champions go, and they're going to go assassinate Steve. They don't, and instead what happens is Punisher gets involved because so many characters like Unworthy Thor are like, but it's Steve. Like, yeah. listen, the Hydra thing, I know that's fucked up, but, like, I'm playing a longer game here. Deadpool is that. Deadpool's like, I am going to be on the Steve train. I trust woo, Cap. Woo. And he is wrong the whole time. He kills Phil Coulson, retconned into regular Marvel continuity. And then it's like, Steve was an asshole the whole time. You're an asshole now too. And he's like, damn it. Uh, so, you fourth wall breaking jerk. You should have seen that one coming. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How come you didn't look through the gutters for that one, douchebag? <laughs> yeah, you so, didn't see the editor's note over there? 
actually yeah. evil. Deadpool dumbass. <laughs> so they didn't do anything no, with that. No, no, no. They're not talking about me. So they're they like, did that. Cool. And with Punisher, Punisher is not swept up in Captain America fever. He's more like, when Steve rewrites history, my family will be alive. I'm in. Which what I don't buy. That's a Batman thing, not a Frank Castle thing. Frank Castle's like, my family is in the ground. I don't cotton to cosmic cubes and infinity gauntlets. He's the I see a soldier who became a Nazi, and so at the end of the day, he is going to be in my scope. That's yeah. Frank. Yeah. This Frank is a toolbox. Arguably, you know, depending on what you like or dislike about Punisher, he's always a toolbox. But in this, like, oh no, all, the, all that matters is Taskmaster's too busy doing other things with Black Ant, so he can't fight Black Widow, so it's Punisher, okay? Yeah. So Punisher prevents Black Widow from assassinating Steve. Uh, but it's okay because we're going to set up the whole Miles Morales is going to kill Steve anyway situation. That's what happens with that. Does he kill her? Steve kills Black Widow, yes. Yeah. From that moment that Steve held aloft Mjolnir, he has not been able to do it again. And I don't think that's implicitly known. I think it's more like he has not gone back to gone it. Gone back to it. He, he goes to it. There. But he never goes like, see, and like twirls it around. Right. But it's more <laughs> like, I think he knows he's not, like somewhere deep inside, and he knows he's not worthy. Uh, of course, it's an enchantment by Madame Hydra, but we'll get to that later. Uh, also... There are these, like, flashes to the vanishing point, which is this, like, space in between time. Which is, like, the best art. Oh, yeah. I really like the art so in that good. section. Basically, it's that, like, there's a real Steve Rogers inside. There's, like, <laughs> real Steve is fighting to get back. And he's, like, in, this, in the wilderness. You know, like, the metaphorical and literal wilderness. And he's helped by characters in his life. It's like an Arthurian journey that he goes through to, to reclaim his humanity and his identity. And he winds up, like... You know, doing that. Meanwhile, uh, Kobik has gone off the map and evil Steve can't get her. And he's thinking, well, if I get all the shards, I'll put her together and then make her do it. Yeah, I mean. like, I, I've said this so many times, but like Dragon Balls. Like Dragon Balls. <laughs> it's true. You gotta get them together, you gotta make the wish. So, basically, the book devolves into a, like, Team A and Team B are looking for the same things. And then their wires get crossed and they both converge on the same location, which is a secret country built by Hank Pym Ultron, which is a reference to a original graphic novel called Avengers Rage of Ultron, yep. in which Hank Pym and Ultron are amalgamated into one being, Yeah. who then, I guess, gets back to Earth sometime between him going into space and not, <laughs> and he gets stuck in here within the shield and he builds this whole thing. And he basically invites both teams to have dinner with a him. A really uncomfortable dinner. Yeah, it's it's the it's the worst Thanksgiving you're better you've ever been invited right. to. Right. It's it's like what I assume happened at Bespin after they all sealed the doors. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That sequence is for me one of the best moments in the book. Really? Because it's like a microscope on editorial just letting this universe spiral out of control after having one of the best eras of Marvel in yeah. recent memory. Mm -hmm. Pym basically, you know, he seals them all up. They can't, like, move. They're shackled and whatnot. And he's like, you all screwed up. Ultron hasn't destroyed this Earth because you're doing it for him, you toolboxes. Like, so, like, if Ultron is fine with this, clearly you're an idiot. Everyone's wrong. And uh, it, it's it's funny because like they all basically trade insults and yell at each other. And Scott Lang keeps calling him Hank. You know, he's like, Hank, come on, man. Uh, meanwhile, Steve keeps calling him Ultron. And uh, at the end of the day, Pimtron has a shard of the Cosmic Cube, and he gives it to the Avengers because they called him Hank and not Ultron. All right. Whatever. <laughs> so. Uh, it's really funny, though, because it all comes apart because AI Tony just says, the reason why we don't do this anymore, like, we don't hang out, we don't, like, have poolside barbecues, is because you hit Janet. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. And he's that. like, oh my god! <laughs> like, you caused two civil wars! I'm never gonna live down the back end! <laughs> <laughs> and yet, despite all that, he gives him the Cosmic Cube anyway. So, 
Because you called me Hank. Well, because he knows in, in his heart of hearts, he's like, it's true, though. Right? I did. <laughs> I'll never escape it. I was Scientist Supreme. Does anybody remember that? It'd be funny if you just like, oh, we still have barbecues. Dude, that's Yours like. Not <laughs> that's what, like... what are you talking about, Hank? We have all the time. Oh. That hit was like the slap heard across the universe. The Avengers go to Wakanda, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're like, T'Challa, like, help us out. And he goes, okay. I've got counter offer. You give me all the pieces and I'll fix the universe. And they're like, no. <laughs> like, it's like that. Where you're like, T'Challa's a cool guy. He's an Avenger. He knows you guys. Like, why is he such a douche in this universe? And I guess it's because America became a fascist state within about an hour. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming it's one of those like, like, T'Challa's like, I don't know who to trust right now. And they're like, you're a whole government in and of yourself. I don't know if we can trust you either. Yeah, like... We shouldn't have come here. Yeah, what a mistake. Are we going to leave with our lives? <laughs> T'Challa's like, maybe. I don't know. Mm. That really depends on how things go. Uh, it really depends on how strong your rear reflector shield is. <laughs> so, uh, that, that happens. And uh, meanwhile, of course, like, no one's seen Kobik and no one's seen Bucky. Yeah. Uh, that's because Bucky and Kobik are friends and they're hanging out. Uh... We're just chilling? Yeah. And Kobik, of course, is like really, really sad about how she's like, I thought I was doing good. I didn't know I was being manipulated by an evil looking Nazi with a skull face. Well, like, He's got the... a red skull face. Yeah, but like you need to have like cultural touchstones <laughs> to know that that's bad. Yeah, you're a sentient cosmic cube that took the form of like an eight year old girl. Yeah, like you don't know. You don't know that like culturally speaking that that like is evil looking. No, that's like an I don't know. I mean, I feel like if you hold up against like a baby, a doll of like a horrible skull, and the doll of like a bee. Yeah, They're gonna go for the bee doll. But like, what if you were somewhere else in the universe and there no. were people who just had skull faces? They'd oh, be like... Well, Kobik did not have a skull face. And they just wanted to like grind teeth against one another. Ben knows Ugh. all about that. Steve goes on his Arthurian journey, runs into Red Skull, who's also there. Cause like, I don't know, everyone's well, dead Well, apparently Steve would be nowhere, nowhere without Red Skull. Right. Is what the Well, Red Skull is like, you're nothing, like, you don't even remember who you are. This whole plan blew up my face. Yeah. Am I even Red Skull or am I like the memory of Red Skull? Right, but that's what's so bizarre. Yeah. The Vanishing Point thing is when we when this book was coming out, we theorized that the Vanishing Point was added after the book had already been finished and that's why there were so many delays. Because like we thought that it's a full retcon and that the store is gonna end with them achieving their goal with the Cosmic Cube thing, and then Steve being like, oh my god, like, I don't remember doing all these horrible things, or I do. It's a different version of me that did it, but no one's gonna believe that, and now the status quo for Captain America is you're an asshole. Mm -hmm. And you're just gonna have to, like, earn your way back. Yeah. We've ruined Steve Rogers as a character. That's yeah. what they would say. Like, the, the, the heart and, like, like, of the Avengers. Yeah, your favorite superhero is probably going to be the most hated character in the universe, despite the fact that he never really technically did any of those no. things, but the person he was within him achieved those goals because of who he is, foundationally speaking. Yeah, because his past got changed. Yeah, and so we theorized, and I think many other people did as well, that that was going to be too unpalatable for readers because it was already unpalatable for readers when this was happening and so they were like well actually how about there's just a secret good Captain America that's there the whole time that can show up and be the good guy at the end to visually distinguish between good e good Steve and evil Steve mm -hmm. Steve Black Widow's fighting Punisher she's she beats the crap out of him because she's way more skilled than he is and uh, Miles and Steve face off Steve is like I'll die. I don't care. I'm ready to go. I know mm -hmm. what's going on. Black Widow, of course, has a change of heart because she's, you know, she's like all the whole book. She's like, we gotta kill him. We gotta kill him. And the champion's like, no, killing is wrong. And then at the end, she's like, you made me care more. Damn it. So she jumps in the way, and Steve winds up killing Black Widow, as you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And this throws Miles into a murderous rage. So he's going to kill Captain America, and he finds like the spike that he's gonna die on. And Young Wasp, which is to say Nadia Pym, Hank Pym's secret illegitimate daughter from another story, yeah. shows up. She's like, don't do it, Miles. You're a good guy, even though I don't really know you. And Miles is like, you're Thanks, right. Bobby. 
yeah, don't do it, Link. So he's like, <laughs> okay, and then he doesn't, and then the champion's like, yay! And then Steve is like, oh, man. And so the champions are arrested. Steve is like, this doesn't, I don't understand what's going on. Like, I don't get it. Everything's all thrown off. Now, now I may not win. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the playbook now. Also, Sam Wilson had become disenfranchised with America and being a hero, and he became, like, a freedom fighter, and he, like, helped the Avengers get to, Did he become a nomad? More or less. (laughs) Yes, he did. (laughs) And so, after all of this, Sam basically takes up the mantle of Captain America again to kind of, like, rally the troops and be like, no. This still means something. Yeah, there must be a Captain America. All the space heroes are still outside the dome. Quasar got messed up by one of those stupid Chitauri, like dinosaurs and so she was like in a coma or asleep or whatever the entire time and she was the like key to the energy they need to like break down the the shield and so they've just been fighting chitauri wave after wave of chitauri like the entire time just getting exhausted waiting for quasar to wake up and uh so eventually she finally does and she helps facilitate like the destruction of the shield and then no one could just take her fans? No. But they basically they have like, it's like a very Star Warsian style, like where's he got the cut between the different Oh yeah, yeah, where all the heroes, and yeah, and it looks like everyone's gonna lose. Like, yeah. you know, f- Sam is flying his way through ca- as Captain America, like over the ocean, and then he just gets taken down. You're like, oh no, like he went, and everyone like loses. And then in like, it, it's that moment where, you know, the bird or ship or whatever flies and then falls and then there's a pause, and then it goes, woo, and yep. it comes up, and you're like, yay, exactly. and the music swells, yeah. and everyone's happy because the movie's about to end. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> they get into the shield, the people in New York get out of the dome. Exactly. Did we talk about the X-Men and how, like, they formed their own, like, nation state, and they were they treaty with Captain America, basically, to make them look like jerks? But then it turns, well, that happened. Yeah, and like Frasier Beast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then it turns out that, like, the X Men say screw that, and they join the fray. Yeah. Doesn't when they when they see the treaty thing, it's like when we see the hammer too. Does yeah. it, does Beast like question him like not? Yeah, he's like, hey, look, pick it up. Good. And so he's like, I don't need to prove anything to you. And I like anything. to think that that was like the linchpin for them, where they were like, okay, oh, we're, we okay. are on the wrong side of this. <laughs> oh, we screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so basically, all the heroes like team up and fight all the bad guys. And uh, Steve, of course, like runs into Kobik in the Vanishing Point, which is just you know state of mind. Right. Um, and uh, is Bucky also there? No. So Sam's got a fragment of the Cosmic Cube, and in fact, it's like the only one they got. Like the bad guys have most of the Cosmic Cube, and Sam's got one shard of the Cosmic Cube. So he goes to take the fight to Evil Steve. And he puts on this garish green Iron Patriot armor. And they also go like, well, we don't have the full thing. It's, oh, it doesn't matter. Shove all the cosmic cubes into me. And then, uh, because I'm literally flying blind, I don't know how the ending turns out. Yeah. So just shove all the peas into me, and then I will beat Sam Wilson, get the shard, and then rewrite America's history to be the true history, and we'll win. And so Sam goes to face off against Steve, and he does, and there's this like moment where they parallel the scene where Steve Rogers faces off against Thanos from Infinity Gauntlet, where it's like facing off against in- insurmountable odds. So Sam like marches up to Steve, and then kneels and says, Hail Hydra, and hands in the shard. And I love it because Steve goes, that's unexpected. Like, good for you, man. Like, all right. You, I knew you were my best friend. Like, let's do this. So then he puts the shard in, and it completes the Cosmic Cube, but unbeknownst to Steve, Kobik and Bucky have been working in cahoots. So they're like, when we forge the Cosmic Cube, Kobik will be able to tell Bucky to enter the Vanishing Point and pull real Steve into reality. So then Bucky pulls Vanishing Point Steve out of the Vanishing Point, and as a result, Real Steve Rogers jumps basically out of evil Steve Rogers and then he And young. And young. Yeah. And that too. <laughs> and he fights evil Steve. And you're like, what? That's where I was like, like, that 
is the most significant moment where it feels like you changed at the last second. Yes, because it's like it went from being like we retcon Steve's history so that he is this individual now, but like there's still but, part of him that has the, remains that, yeah. and makes it where it's like no, there's an entirely different individual who has that background and is a really bad guy. Right, but and it, then there's Captain well, America. It's just it's evil Steve. It's just yeah. like Steve, but when he was raised evil, and we're just gonna undo that. That's all they had to do. That's all they had to do. And instead, they're like, no, no, Captain America will fight him so that you believe that Captain America is a good guy. <laughs> right. But who punches evil Steve in the end is my question. Right. And it can't be Sam Wilson because that would make too much sense. So instead, it's just straight up Steve Rogers as Captain America. And then they reveal that Madame Hydra enchanted Mjolnir and it said whoever be strongest... No, oh, uh, whosoever hold this hammer, if he be strongest, shall possess the power of Hydra. And so Steve believed he was worthy and he lifted Mjolnir for right, a Which is second. also bizarre that she could enchant Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Because then it doesn't work again and Steve picks up Mjolnir and he just like bashes the armor off of evil Steve. Now, you could have salvaged this by having a moment where like Steve beats evil Steve and then like all the heroes surround them and they're like, okay, well I guess we'll kill him or arrest him. And Steve's like, no, he's a part of me. And then absorbs him. Yeah, like, like Clue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no, he isn't me, but he's what I could be. And I have to live with his choices and decisions. And so, uh, yeah, like that would be bizarre. So now he has like two histories. So now there's two Steves, one, one who's just, evil and one who's good, just with two different him. histories. Yeah, but instead they arrest him, and now he's a character. How about you just unmake him? Since that's what Kobik did, she just made another Steve. No, because then the it will be too hard for the Marvel universe to accept that. Steve didn't do those things, and we don't have a physical body of a guy who did those things that looks just like. The I other find Steve. it hard to believe that these heroes. Couldn't understand that. I know. Nor do I find it hard to believe that the readers couldn't fathom it. Yeah, I, I just... I... That being said, Steve punches the bad guy and they win at the end. And then Kobik... Oh, because, by the way, like, they... With the shards, before they get the last piece, Steve remakes history. And so everything's evil again. Like, everything... Everything fails. Yeah. And then Sam gives him the last piece, and then that makes Kovic Kovic, and then she's like, no, screw that. And she unmakes it. Mm -hmm. And then all the heroes are like, hooray! Yeah, but I guess they just didn't want to leave Captain America... With this complicated situation. Right. Where, like, they're like, no, because they definitely have the panels of, like, they're like, and people watch. They saw it. They saw yeah, Captain literally, America. Yeah, the fact that there are panels of people seeing two Captain Americas says to me... That's extra. Now like, I'm sure that's, you, that's I'm sure you're going to go into this, but like after this, Captain America was still like on the outs with people. Yeah, and I'm like, but you can't do but that not, if you. Yeah, but not as much as he would have been. Right, which would have been interesting. Yeah, here's the most frustrating part about this ending. Besides the fact that Nick Spencer has said out loud that this is not a retcon, that he always meant for this to be the ending, despite the fact that editors and writers within this period said in interviews. That it's not like we're going to have Steve show up at the end and punch the bad guy. But, that being said, the funny thing is, this is essentially a one-dimensional version of a two- to three-parter episode of Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Where they basically adapt Secret Invasion in the, in the, con in the cartoon. And in the show, instead of... Spider-Woman being the evil, like, scroll. it's Captain America. So Cap is swapped with Skrulls. And then Cap, who is being impersonated by a Skrull, says to America and the world to acquiesce to the Skrull invasion. And oh, yeah. then Steve shows up, like, he, he's freed, he reclaims his identity, he kicks the crap out of the bad guy, and yet, the world still can't quite trust Steve Rogers again. And he basically is like, I don't care. I know the truth. That's it. Yeah. And it's like really well executed. And the fallout is felt throughout that whole series. 
There's a whole episode where he runs into Spider-Man, who's, of mm-hmm. course, being smeared by the Daily Bugle. You know, and Spider-Man's like, why don't you say something? Like, argue with people. Yeah. And C's like, why? They have a right to be angry, and I know the truth. That's all that matters. Like, they're, they're allowed to be mad, and I can take it. And Spider-Man's like, wow, that's really cool. And you're like, oh, that's nice. Like, what a really cool scene. And it's n- not even close to how, like, lame this turns out to be. Right? Is he just... still just floating around? Yes. Oh, damn But, it. like, if you fix American history, then he should be erased. Right. Well, yeah. Well, no, because it's not technically time travel. Like, if they had done time travel, you know, and made it so that Steve was changed in the timeline... He yeah. is, but it's mad. They, it, but they it's only cosmic change, cube they time They changed travel. it in his head. They change it for Steve, and like Selvig and other like select characters within. Yeah, him. only certain people because like Red Skull is still very aware of what's happening. Yeah, and like, I feel, and I think so is the committee, right? Like, right. They're totally on board that they need to keep this up, otherwise. Otherwise, he's gonna kick their ass. Yeah, absolutely. So like, yeah, it's more that Steve thinks that it's always been that way. Yeah, so not like, that reality has been such that I, it was that he I was always think, that. Because otherwise, it would have been a time travel thing. They right. would have just gone back in time but and had them change. What's it. bizarre is so like, Kobix is not a complete cosmic cube. cube. No, right. Okay, and that's why she's only able to adjust just Steve at the beginning of this, right? I, no, I think it's more like Red Skull thought it'd be hilarious. Right, but it's like, wouldn't it have been better if you actually just made that the thing? <laughs> no. Your your whole ploy is to get the cosmic cube to make it so that this is a reality. Yes. And instead of doing that from the get-go, you were like, no, hang on. I think that the reason that they, that they did that was because Spencer was like, that's too far. Like, if I have, instead of that, instead of, it, instead of it being that, that Red Skull adjusts Doctor Doom's time machine, goes back in time, and, like, raises Steve or something, mm-hmm. that actually changes the timeline. But if Kobik just changes time as it's perceived by Steve's head... Then it's all centrally located in that one person, and I can snap my fingers and undo it, and it doesn't change Marvel continuity, and it doesn't really irreparably change Steve Rogers as a character. But mm. then there's, that's still Steve. That's not an alternate version. It's not like Steve is hidden somewhere. That's Steve. Yes, and it always is, but it's just that Steve is different because of his perception. But that doesn't make any sense as to why there's two Steve. Exactly. No, I agree. I, I think that's a cop-out. And, uh, but, but ultimately, if you read it all in one sitting, like, it reads pretty well. I, and the, yeah. and, and, and the, the premise of that, like, you know, the idea, especially if you try not to meta-read it, because, like, meta-reading it, you know, you're like, oh, no. Secret Empire is a pretty decent story. It's like a, it's, it's a pretty engaging story with some varying degrees of excellent art versus standard art. Mm. That being said, the story of Secret Empire, this concept where it's like this event that at any other period in Marvel history probably would have gone off with a rousing success. Mm-hmm. Picked the worst possible time to come out. Yeah. And as a result, became this mess that I think, and this is just me, and I, you know, I'm not saying this is Bible truth. I'm just saying, like, I theorize that the ending was altered at the zero hour so that you really understood that... Things are going to go back to the way they were. Right, and I, I could definitely see that. Yeah, I think I'm what sorry. also, yeah, what also didn't help with this book was like, I think a lot of people were suffering from event fatigue. Oh, at this big point. by that point, absolutely. I mean, like you just Secret Wars, the biggest thing ever, and then you did like Pleasant Hill and this and yeah, this like is, there was just so too many much. things, and then they're like, and now here's this tome. And, like, I remember reading this week to week and how much of a slog it was to get through. And I remember thinking the same thing, though, that, like, I thought it would, would read differently In like trade. this. And it doesn't. It's, it, it, it's still a slog because you know what happens. Right. And so you're like, oh, my God. Like, why are people acting like this? Like, why don't they get this? Yeah. It is, but you, you do then wind up appreciating some other things. Like, I really appreciate, like, the inner circle that works with Steve and how funny and interesting they are. Right. Like, and how well, scared they are of him. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And that element is the, the, the part where, like, the heroes all, like, hole up in a cave in Las Vegas is, like, so 
stupid. Like it's such a it's such a waste. Like I, I I don't know. It feels so cliche and dumb. And they're arguing, and I'm like, I literally just saw all the heroes hiding in a bunker, being mad at each other in Age of Ultron, and then he did it again. Yeah. And they're saying the same shit, but they're all and and they're all like, oh no, this one thing can't possibly work. And then the one thing that can't possibly work is the one thing that possibly works. And you're like. Uh, just again and I get that like you know some people well, maybe a lot of older people read Age of Ultron obviously they didn't because like uh, it was Age of Ultron but like you know think about this well like Marvel doesn't have one character that just goes look I'm on board for this because didn't... we need to win right no other and you have characters like that but like they're the champions and it's funny how it's like they're really pushing the champions at that point. So, yeah. of course the champions are the voice of hope and reason. And you're like, hey, hey new stuff. Yeah, hey. And, and you're kind of like, oh my God. Like, you're really, really pushing a lot of these things. And, like, th there's a whole... And, and there are linchpins where you're like, screw you. You know, like, the, the, the recently killed Hulk from Civil War II. Yeah, like, Steve resurrects Hulk. And you're like, but that that doesn't work and you know it's kind of like an oh shit moment when it was happening but like in the context you're kind of like that sucks and like the the, the champions have to free mosaic yeah who was a brand new character that they were really pushing at that point yeah by really pushing i mean like they were hoping he was gonna catch on mm -hmm. and he didn't but like hey i get it you know you you needed to push the inhumans and you wanted to make this new character and so he enter mosaic but you put it in a storyline where it gets muddled and lost well, in this epic thing craziness. That, that is that is dependent on Marvel continuity and you understanding what the hell's going on and who hey, those characters are. Does uh, does Kobik bring back Black Widow at the end? No. No, she's dead. No, and she leaves all the untold dead in Las Vegas. But don't worry, Doctor Strange fixes all that in a horrible Doctor Strange that, story. You know what, though? I am I'm told often I'm wrong about that. You are. You are told you're I'm wrong about that. I'm often told I'm wrong about not liking that story. But hey, listen. Yeesh. That story ushers in a new status quo for Johnny Blaze and Mephisto that no one honors or remembers after that. <laughs> That's what's so amazing about that. I know people like dig it because it is like I think it's Spencer and Kate. Yeah, it's Spates. It, it, yeah, Spates. It's Spates. Spates just come along and they do damnation, and it's like, but like, I don't understand why you only paid attention to one part of it, and not like, it just doesn't make any sense narratively for me. Right. Well, also. The Marvel Universe is the world outside my window. I'm supposed to, like, see parallels with my own reality. And I get that, like, you know, you gotta have stakes and you gotta make it matter and all that stuff. But, like, at this point, at the end of the story, when you have magic Captain America pop out the chest of evil Captain America, yeah. why not wave your magic wand and fix Las Vegas? Mm -hmm. Because at that point, it's still horrific and Las Vegas was already destroyed by the Incredible Hulk, like, a couple years prior. So it's kind of like... I mean, I don't know. It's not like you picked Louisiana and you wanted it to be like another kind of like thematic thing where another it's another like, place. Well, no, I'm saying a place that was destroyed because people didn't act. You know? Yeah. Instead it's just yeah, I guess, we wrecked Las Vegas. I guess Strange does more magic in this than I would have imagined. Yeah. So, but it's still Aaron's Doctor Strange. It, it's just bizarre. I guess because they needed him to do these things. Yeah. At the end of the day, <laughs> if you make your story sprawling and loose and open-ended so that any tie-in can factor in, yeah. you're going to need Doctor Strange to show up to use some magic to make things work faster. Well, yeah, the fact that, no, the <laughs> fact that they used Wanda and Cathan, you knew that Strange was going to end up being involved. Yeah. Which is too bad. Which is funny because it's not like he deals with it in the time. Like, he no, doesn't. He'll deal with the dark dimension bubble. Yeah. It's like fine. Right. There's a chance to bring Clea in, but whatever. You know, let's not do that. No, no one knows who that is. But let's make Mosaic an integral character. <laughs> Secret Empire is. I want to give it credit because it actually is ambitious and pretty well executed, but it is tied in with this rat king of nonsense. I love this comment. Nick Spencer is a fantastic writer. Yeah, I was like, what? I need you to say something nice about Secret Empire. Nick Spencer is a fantastic writer. 
Which I feel wait, like is actually normally. Wait, what about Secret Empire? I just gave you my quote. I will not repeat I it. I think there are better quotes on the back of it. Secret Empire delivers. Yeah. Compelling and dramatic. You could have gotten Rob to, from Comics Explained to give a thousand quotes on the yeah. back. He loved Secret Empire. But, and by the way, and I get it because it is a big surprise and like yeah. the twist for Captain America and, the, and, and it's tidy. It starts out tidy. We just retconned his own personal continuity as far as he's perceiving it. Yeah. We can fix that at any point. The, it's not like we Red Skull uses the Cosmic Cube to rewrite Steve's history and then uses the Cosmic Cube to unmake all Cosmic Cubes. Right. So they can never fix it. You have to deal with it. Or the heroes then have to assemble the Infinity Gauntlet or something. Right, exactly. Like, but you know what I mean? Like, Again. It's like, no, it's just, it's smashed and we need to do a stupid scavenger hunt and fix it later. Yeah. Like, you know that the Cosmic Cube is going to come into play and fix the problem. So it's, it's very tidy, but then it just gets away from itself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the Cosmic Cube doesn't fix the problem. The no, it Cosmic does. The Cosmic Cube allows somebody else to fix the problem. Yeah, like, but like I said, you know, Nick Spencer is a fantastic writer because there's a moment in it that I adore in which Bucky reaches through the vanishing point to save Steve, and it parallels when Steve reached out to save Bucky and failed to do so on the rocket. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love that moment because it's like Bucky's returning the favor. I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. There's a, there's, and there's a lot of moments like that in here. But then you also have like Hydra Punisher and you're like, get out of here. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's complicated. But I'll leave a link in the description below this video so you can get a copy of this. But otherwise, you know, what, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I can understand Hydra Punisher where he's behind Steve because he's like, I can get my family back. I get that I interpretation only of him. the Punisher. Because my family's because dead. Because I lost my family. Yeah, but he doesn't not want to be Punisher. He just doesn't want his family to be dead. Hey, <laughs> what reason do I have to be Punisher if my family's alive? I don't know. I guess that's true. Yeah. We've got more PTA meetings to go to, I guess. You're but, gonna, gonna want to punish them for that, I guess. Yeah, but that being said, like, I don't know. I, I guess they also have like a modicum of like restraint, like in the vanishing point. Steve could have run into like a lot of past versions of himself. Yes. Like little him before he had the super soldier serum. Yep. No bad him. Yeah. I mean, that being said, the vanishing point is exploited because they did that tie-in series yeah. called Generations where like all the heroes enter the vanishing point right. and then exited immediately after that. So it's a blink of an eye, but all these other tie-ins happen. Like, Ugh. eat me. Yeah, no, I, I, but like actually now that I think about it, him meeting like little version of him. Would be great. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Secret but, Empire. Because that's him as a hero. Right. Like, that's... That's, the, yeah, the, that's real that's Steve. That's where it came from. That's where mm -hmm. it all started. Yeah, that's the germ of Steve. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Secret Empire, there you have it. We'll see you guys next time on another episode of Back Issues as we head on over to episode 300. Woo! Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next time. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So long and hail Hydra. <laughs> Ben's just really excited. <laughs> yeah, you did it. I know. I was just like... <laughs>